In recent days, oil prices have climbed above $100 a barrel, and as chaos spreads through Arab countries, it could get much worse. We're pleased to be joined by Tom Pio, the president of the Institute for Energy Research. It's a nonprofit organization that studies global energy markets. Welcome to Newsmax TV, Tom. Thanks for having me. Is President Obama's drilling moratorium a major negative factor in the sky-high price of gasoline? You bet. Uh, the president's policies have led to uh, a basically a shutting down of the oil and gas industry in this country, which, as the third largest producer of oil in the world, is certainly going to send a signal to the marketplace that uh, we are going to see a shortening of supply at a time when we actually need to, 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 to be producing as much oil as possible, not only to satisfy the growing demand in other countries, but also in order for us to recover economically. Sarah Palin accuses Obama of waging a war on domestic oil and gas exploration and production. Do you agree with her? 100%. Uh, these policies have begun from the day he was sworn in. For example, uh, in the Intermountain West, the president has stonewalled the permitting process there. Uh, of course, the moratorium in the Gulf is having a detrimental impact. In the offshore of Alaska, where there are hundreds of millions of barrels of oil, he has, in essence, slow walked the active permitting process that was taking place there. Um, anywhere in this country where we produce oil and gas, and coal for that matter, the president's policies have said no. Louisiana Senator David Bitter tells us resuming drilling in the Gulf could virtually cut gasoline prices in half. Is he on target with that? Well, I'm not sure about the specific number, but I will tell you this that if we do get back to work producing energy in this country, it will have an immediate impact on the price of crude oil. Not because it's going to be pumped out of the ground today, but because, as I said earlier, being the third largest producer of oil in the world, it would send a signal to the markets that we're back in business. And these folks, the folks who bet on oil in the future, will say, okay, supply is going to come back. Tom, you mentioned Alaska. There are some who say Democrats are softening their position about drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in a remote frozen part of northeast Alaska. If we did drill in Anwar, what effects would that have? Again, the same thing. I mean, it's so ironic because in 2008 when we had $4 gasoline, we would have had Anwar oil online were it not vetoed by then President Clinton in 1995. So the, the opponents of oil and gas exploration and production in this country keep saying, oh, it won't make a difference, it won't come online anyway. But if we keep kicking this can down the road, we're never going to get to that energy. There's a strategic pipeline in Alaska called the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. It's currently flowing at less than a third of its capacity. If we opened Anwar, for example, if we allowed responsible drilling in the Outer Continental Shelf in Alaska, we could bring that number back up to the amount of oil that the world needs, the amount of new oil that the world needs every year. We have vast energy resources in this country. We have a government, both Democrats and Republicans in the past, who have said no. If current policy continues, do you see gasoline prices soaring to their highest levels ever? Absolutely, without a doubt. We are on a path for not only 450 gasoline, potentially five, even $6 gasoline if these policies continue. That is a fact. It, it is basic economics 101. When the supply of, of a product is, in, is going down and demand is increasing, that price is going to go up. And that's exactly what's happening. Some Democrats are using the crippled nuclear power plant in Japan as an example of why we should stop plans to build any more nuclear power plants here. What do you say to them? I say it's short-sighted, and I say that they're, they're trying to capitalize on what is a horrible uh, a situation in Japan, and it should not lead to a shutdown of an entire industry. And by the way, the, the production of energy from nuclear fuel is emission-free, and so if the in, uh, environmentalists who claim that they want to reduce CO2 emissions are going to abandon nuclear, I don't know what else is left for them. Maybe hamsters in a wheel or something, but it's just not possible to produce emission-free energy without a robust nuclear policy. Tom Pyle, President of the Institute for Energy Research, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.